So today I want to talk about the Mississippi River drying up. I've talked about the issues surrounding the Colorado River drying up numerous times on this channel, and one of the proposed solutions to the crisis in the U.S. West has been to try to transfer water from the Mississippi River below its freeze point across the country to the U.S. West. Well, thankfully, that plan has not been implemented and is unlikely to be implemented anywhere in the near future, because right now, the Mississippi River is having issues of its own. The Mississippi is currently at its lowest levels in over a decade due to a drought in the region surrounding the Mississippi River, and these low levels are going to have massive economic implications. So let's explore what's going on in this intersection of economy and climate change surrounding the Mississippi River drying up. So we have here that the lowest water levels in the Mississippi River in a decade caused by a severe Midwest drought have closed the vital channel to barge traffic at a crucial time of year for the transport of crops from the nation's heartland. Meanwhile, the Army Corps of Engineers has been dredging portions of the river for the past week in an attempt to deepen channels and get barge traffic moving again. But the closures have caused a massive tie-up in the nation's already struggling supply chains. They've literally had to send people in to go dig under the water to make sure that they could actually get ships through. And in the meantime, the low water has already been responsible for eight barges running aground during the last week, according to a report from the U.S. Coast Guard. Now, as of Friday, there were 144 vessels and 2,253 barges queued up and waiting to get through two stretches of the river where traffic had been halted, one near Memphis and the other near uh, north of Vicks uh, Vicksburg, Mississippi. And so, like, this is what's been going on. And even when these barges are cleared and once they start moving again, there's going to be some issues around how much can be transported on the river. Uh, they actually are going to lower the quantity of goods that can be traveled on the river, as they'll be forced to carry as much as 20% less cargo than normal in order to not ride too deep in the water. And rather than a single vessel moving between 30 to 40 barges at one time, as they normally do, they've been forced to move no more than 25 barges on each trip due to the more narrow channels. And uh, to make matters worse, when we look at some of the reports from the Agricultural Commissioner of Mississippi, Andy Gibson, he says it's extremely low and this is a really terrible time for this to be happening, Gibson told WLBT. After nearly a month without rain and similarly dry conditions in states north of us, there has not been enough water for barges to move their freight. We have fully loaded grain trucks just parked in town, waiting for some alternative, uh, Gibson said of the predicament. We've got, uh, uh, we gotta have barge traffic. We need the rain to fall. Meanwhile, last year, Mississippi-grown soybeans brought in $1.5 billion to the state. But this year, farmers are no doubt wringing their hands. Demand continues to outpace the availability of truck and rail transport options. And of course, with the river going through what it is, some of the barge options are no longer available. And according to uh, them, there's not even 10 feet of water in the middle of the river at the moment. So what we really have here going on is a situation where we're seeing another extreme weather event, this case a massive drought, which is causing issues in terms of crops already across the country. Now we have an issue where that's further exacerbating the issue by causing the Mississippi River's levels to lower. And they've gotten so low that river barges that are carrying the current harvests are getting stuck in some places. And as we'll talk about in a moment, things are not going to get better anytime soon and are in fact are likely to get a lot worse. They literally had to dig a deeper trench in the center of the river to help get these barges flowing again. And this is still going to slow down the movement of goods both northbound and southbound. And that means that the exchange of goods that are necessary and done through the Mississippi River are not going to happen in a timely fashion. 
And with the way that capitalism tends to try to maximize efficiency with moving things through these riverways, we're not going to have much room for anything to slow down or fail. That's just one of the problems of, you know, pushing everything to their limit in the way that our current economic system runs. And there's going to be even less room for traffic to go through in the near future as they have to lower these levels of cargo so that the ships don't end up hitting the bottom and therefore slowing things down even further. And if you have too many uh, barges coming through, it can also have a lot of problems, so they're going to limit that as well. So this is all going to have significant financial implications for the region. That said, as of Monday, the dredging more or less had done its job. Uh, as of Monday, uh, at midday, um, more or less, 22 vessels and 392 barges were still waiting to move southbound, according to a statement. That's still an improvement from over the weekend, where there were more than 2,000 barges stalled. However, it's worth noting that more than 90% of America's agricultural exports are produced in the Mississippi Basin, and much of that makes its way to market along the river. L roughly three quarters of the world's feed grain and soybean exports and some livestock produced nationally are shipped on the Mississippi River. Now, that's a lot of commerce that's going to be lost or slowed down if they cannot, in fact, move things on the river. Now, the problem, of course, is, as I mentioned, it's going to get worse in the near future, as meteorologists warn that a low water level will persist, crippling farmers just as harvest is in full swing and threatening to further propel food inflation around the world. Now, the Mississippi is only the latest in a number of river droughts that we're seeing across the world. We've seen it in the Rhine River. Um, we've seen it in the Yangtze. Uh, of course, the Colorado River, there's a number of different places across the globe right now that are seeing this massive uh, loss in water supplies in rivers, and that's really making it difficult. And so they're also talking about how this is going to have massive issues around food inflation. Now, yeah, the cost of goods are going to go up, but as I always need to mention, Whenever we see the word inflation, we have to understand that price gouging is going to accompany it. Whenever you see companies producing massive amounts of profits on top of it, they're passing the costs and more onto the consumer. And that's going to happen. We're going to see this used as an excuse by a lot of food companies, especially with some of the issues I talked about recently, um, where, you know, four companies basically own 60% of some of the major foods in the United States, you have issues where you're going to see these companies continue to price gouge even further. So yes, the cost is going to go up from this slowdown, but that's going to be passed even more onto people as price gouging continues to occur. Now, it's also worth noting that uh, when we talk about how bad this is actually going to get, uh, there are some predictions out there. So as of October 10th, the Mississippi River was at a stage of minus 5.7 feet. Uh, there's an arbitrary zero line that's established on the Mississippi River that was established over 100 years ago. But from that line, we are currently at negative 5.7 feet. Now, the river is expected to continue to fall over the next two weeks, reaching negative 9.5 feet by October 22nd, meaning within the span of the next 12 days, we're talking about the river dropping an additional four feet. And if we understand and accept what was being said, that there was not even 10 feet of water in certain parts, that could fall down to six feet. And so you can see how this might have long-term implications for some of the goods that need to be transported by barge on the river. Now, meanwhile, the lowest level that we've ever seen is negative 10.7 feet, which, was, uh, which happened in July of 1988. Now, this is happening again. And so we're going to see these levels uh, that are, you know, ridiculously low occur in, you know, real time. And so that's going to have a massive implication on an economy that's already strained. And so 
When we uh, look further down the river, we also find this case where a shipwreck from the early 20th century was actually found. Louisiana State archaeologist Chip McGimsey thinks Ford stumbled onto the wreck of an early Baton Rouge ferry boat, the SS Brookhill. If this is the boat we think it is, she sank on September 29, 1915. And because the water levels have gotten so low, this just emerged from the water and was found and discovered on, you know, the sand dunes that have been basically forming, or the sand barges, rather, that have been forming on the side of the river. Uh, meanwhile, when we look at uh, the Carrollton Gauge in New Orleans, they're only measuring at three feet above sea level. And the mighty river's feeble flow is wreaking havoc on shipping traffic, as we talked about, but also on drinking water supplies in the area. The Army Corps of Engineers uh, announced that they had to build a 45-foot tall wall across the bottom of the river to actually prevent a wedge of salt water from moving upstream towards the water intakes. And the Corps had to take a similar action in 2012 when we last saw this type of uh, drought levels and these little levels occurring. But this also occurred in 1999 and 1988. And the fear is that this is going to keep happening more and more commonly, and these extreme weather events, as we've seen with other extreme weather events, are going to become more and more normal. Now, like I said, while these events have clearly occurred before, the extremity of potentially reaching a record-breaking level that was set in 1988, in addition to the increased frequency that we might see this happen, with droughts occurring across the United States and through the entire pathway of the Mississippi, as well as some of its water sources maybe not having as much uh, water pour into the river initially, may make it so that this becomes an all-too-common occurrence. This could mean that not just this year, but in the coming years, we may need to see a reduction in traffic across the Mississippi, possibly even a reduction in the size of ships and barges that go through it, and a minimization of the amount of traffic that travels through it. This is going to have profound impacts on local economies of towns and cities that have relied on the Mississippi River for well over 100 years for commerce, whether that be shipping freight, as we've talked about, but also things like cruise liners, because the whole idea of cruising down the Mississippi is something that produces a lot of tourist um, money into the region. And in fact, one particular cruise line was actually stopped and they had to turn around because they couldn't get through with everything that was going on. And the trip was canceled. So worse yet, you know, and the perhaps the scariest part about all this is that like we're seeing in um, the area surrounding New Orleans right now, we could actually start seeing this affect more and more water supplies in the near future just as we're seeing in the U.S. West, especially as many people rely on the Mississippi for both food and water. And that's not even counting the fact that we already have pipelines going through the Mississippi and under the Mississippi River. And if any of the hoose were to spill while we're already having reduced levels, that could have significant implications in the long term and in the future for people having proper drinking water throughout sections of the country and uh, in any state that borders the Mississippi River. Again, this is going to be something that we're going to have to keep an eye on, because even if it's not a major, major issue right now, which it already is, truthfully, but even if it's not a major issue right now to the level that the Colorado River is, we're going to see this become more and more of an issue probably over the next 10 to 15 years. And that's scary, because that's the two major river sources that pretty much supply of most of the water for many of these uh, states throughout the country, essentially losing their ability to provide life-sustaining water. So that's the reality that we're living in right now, and that has some really frustrating and potentially dangerous implications in the years to come. But with that said, if you enjoyed what you learned here today and the process that went into making this video, please do consider liking it, subscribing, and joining my Discord, as well as leaving a comment. It's always good to hear from people, and when you come and join the Discord, you can also have more political conversations like these. 
If you're in a financial place to do so, and only if you're in a financial place to do so, please also consider supporting me on Patreon, especially as political content like this can often be demonetized on YouTube. And anything that you donate will go back into the channel and helps a lot to continue to produce content like this. The links for everything that I mentioned are in the description down below. With that said, my name is Anarchist Tara. Thank you so much for watching.